Six of my favorite evidence-based treatments for patellofemoral pain. My name is Dan Pope from fitnesspainfree.com. I'm a physical therapist, I'm a strength coach, and we help thousands of athletes through our courses, community, and mentoring. My goal for you today is to make you 1% better. So patellofemoral pain is the most common form of knee pain treated worldwide in an outpatient setting. If you're a physical therapist, you're definitely going to be seeing this. In today's video, I wanna go over a whole bunch of evidence-based treatments and give you some ideas so you can maximize your outcomes in folks that have patellofemoral pain. Number one, we have hip exercises. In the research, largely you'll see exercise to target the side of the hip, so glute medius, as well as the back side of the hip, or the glute max. Here are my favorite exercises for the glute medius. The first of which is going to be a half side bridge or side plank. We're gonna do abduction of the top side leg. So Steve's gonna go ahead and set up, straighten out that top side leg right here, make sure your hips are stacked on top of one another, shoulders are stacked, good posture, and lift this foot up to the air and right back down again. Excellent. Next one's gonna be a half side bridge clamshell. So same idea, just knees together, heels together. Go ahead and pop up into that half side plank and give me some clamshells here. Yep, hips stay stacked. Excellent. Take a breather. Next one I like a lot is gonna be a full side bridge, side plank, so straighten out those legs fully. Excellent. And go ahead and pop up into that side plank. Good. And if you're working with a very advanced athlete, you can do straight up abduction with a band. Just keep in mind, this is very hard. Okay, so for the glute max, one of my favorite exercises is going to be a hip bridge or a single-legged bridge. I personally feel that these exercises are very easy and they're hard to progress. So I like to start with a single-legged hip thrust. So essentially we have Steve right here on a low box. The box is gonna be cutting his shoulder blades in half. And as you can see, hips go up in the air, come all the way back down. And as you extend with your hip, let your head come back. Yep, and then head comes forward as your hips come down. Very good. Yep, we wanna have the shin more or less um, perpendicular to the floor. So I would say scoot back just a little bit or reach your heel forward some. There you go, and go ahead, rep in the air. Excellent, now he's vertical in his shin right there. Now, one of the things that's nice about this movement, you can take a breather for a second, is we can load it pretty easily. So you can obviously take a dumbbell, put it right on your hip. If you have a sandbag, that also works well. I find that's a little bit challenging. What I like more is taking a TRX strap, and essentially, we have a TRX strap, just like this. We have a carabiner, and the carabiner attaches to itself and makes a circle. And that goes between two kettlebells just like so. And what we do is we take this, and this goes right over top of Steve's hips right there. Yep, one kettlebell on the side, and go ahead and perform a few hip thrusts for me. Good, all the way back down again. And this is really nice because we can add as much or as little weight as we need to. The other thing that's really nice about hip exercises, they tend not to be provocative in someone who has really aggravated patellofemoral pain. So we can load up someone pretty well at their hip without provoking things via the single-legged bridge, but also via single-legged remaining deadlifts. So Steve here is gonna be bouncing on his left side, dumbbells in his right hand, and from here, he's allowing that kettlebell to go down towards the floor, keeping his chest up, reaching his trail side leg back towards the floor, making sure that backside toe is facing down, keeping that kettlebell just a little bit closer to your body as you go. Next up are quad exercises. So the thing about quad exercise is a little bit challenging. If folks that have really bad patellofemoral pain, it hurts to load the quad, because when you load your quad, it stresses the patellofemoral joint. Patellofemoral joint's mad, hurts to do quad exercises. So what do we do? It's okay to work through a little bit of pain, but really we have to choose exercises that accomplish strength training the quad without aggravating things too much. One of my favorites is a sissy squat with a little bit of assistance here, and you can use harder bands to make it more challenging on the quad without putting too much strain through the patellofemoral joint. So from here, Steve is gonna back up just a little bit. We have two bands attached to something sturdy going around the back side of his knees. He's gonna bring his knees forward. We're just gonna load up his quads a little bit. Only go to tolerance, all right? Don't go too far for your patience. And then once he extends, he's getting a bilateral terminal knee extension. So as he extends back, the bands get stretched more, and it's a little bit more work for the quad. So it's one of my favorite introductory exercises for folks with patellofemoral pain. It usually feels pretty good and actually gets the quad going pretty well. Good. Another favorite quad as well as hip exercise is going to be a split squat. Now, sometimes you can't get away with this. Sometimes your patients are so irritable, they just simply can't do this. And that's the case, you can focus on more of the other interventions until they feel a bit better. But the split squat is a great option. Go ahead and take your stance, split it apart. The longer your stride is, the less stress you have on the patellofemoral joint on that lead side leg. And I also have a few AREX pads to elevate that backside lead, knee, excuse me, because the deeper we go into knee flexion, generally the more strain through the patellofemoral joint. So if we go nice and slow, nice and controlled, elevate that backside knee, oftentimes this is tolerated well. And it doesn't have to be the first exercise you choose for your patients. Maybe as it starts to progress along, we choose this eventually once our tolerance goes up. 
here's the thing. There's a million different quad exercises you can choose. I'm not going to go very in-depth on them because I have a very in-depth video series about quad exercise from easy to hard. And I'll leave that in the show notes in the description so you guys can check that out. Next, we have blood flow restriction training. And I love combining BFR, blood flow restriction training, with quad exercises. Why is that, Dan? Generally speaking, when you have patellofemoral pain, it hurts to put heavier loads on your quads, right? Problem is that if we want to increase strength and hypertrophy, we kind of have to use heavier loads, right? So that's a bummer. If you have knee pain, you can't accomplish those things. When we use blood flow restriction training, you only have to use 20% of your one rep max, so light loads, to get the same improvements in strength and hypertrophy as doing heavier loads, 60 plus percent. So that's awesome. We also have cool research to show that BFR training is helpful for reducing patellofemoral pain specifically. So it's a big win-win, right? So there's a lot of different types of exercises I like to use with BFR. Steve just has these straps right on his legs. We basically pump them up to 80% occlusion, and the set rep scheme we typically use is 30 repetitions, followed by 15, 15, 15, with 30 seconds rest in between. Let's show a few reps to step up here. Very good, yep. And the other thing I like to incorporate with these, if well tolerated, are going to be sissy squats, like you saw in the last video, as well as split squats, which you saw in the last video as well. So three different exercises, 30, 15, 15, 15, get you super tired, great for patellofemoral pain too. Next, we'll go over some foot intrinsic strength training or some short foot. Now, this one is a little bit of the new kid on the block in terms of research. Definitely not gonna find as much research on this as you would in hip strengthening and quad strengthening, but a couple cool papers to show that it's beneficial when folks have patellofemoral pain. So essentially, first we'll talk about the foot a little bit, and then I'll help us figure out how to make this position. So essentially, we're trying to take our weight and evenly distribute it on three places on the foot. Can you go ahead and put your foot up and show it to the camera a little bit? So we have the first, it's gonna be the heel on the bottom, then we have the first met head, then we have the fifth met head. And this makes a triangle or a tripod position. So essentially, you're gonna put your foot down, and then we wanna make sure our weight is evenly distributed on those three points. So the problem is when people try to do this, oftentimes they'll kind of claw their, claw their toe down, and they won't have their first met head down, we wanna make sure this first met head is down. And what we're trying to do is shorten up the position between the first met head and the heel. And what happens is we should create a little bit of an arch. So essentially, I'll try to help you out here, just like this, and we should be trying to get this up here, bringing this together. Does that make sense? And you can do repetition, so essentially flatten your foot out all the way, good, and now create that arch some for me. Arch, 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 keep this down, good, keep this down, very good. And then we can also do isometric. So you have your athlete hold this, good, and keep this down right here, excellent. Once your athlete knows how to do this non-weight bearing, we start weight bearing. So go ahead and stand up for me, Steve. And basically he's got half his body weight. Let's go with this leg down first. So he's got half his body weight on this foot and that's gonna make things more challenging. And if, once your athlete masters this, they can just go ahead and pick up the other side leg. Yep. If you want to get super fancy, you can progress to things like single-legged deadlifts, progress to split, uh, split squats, progress to step-ups, everything that you would normally see in the gym, trying to maintain that short foot position. Next, we have McConnell taping. So generally speaking, I almost always favor exercises. Very, very rare that I actually use McConnell taping, but the evidence does have pretty good support for its use, especially when you combine it with exercise. I think in the early stages of rehab, when you're trying to get some buy-in, trying to reduce some of the pain with, with basically like heel taps and some easy quad exercises, this is actually pretty nice, right? But I think I'm gonna be doing a disservice here because I'm not an expert at this, just, just so you know, right? So we have some coverall, and essentially we're taking the coverall, putting it on the outside of Preston's knee here, we wrap it over top of the kneecap, and it's gonna go above the back side of the knee joint, onto the back side of the thigh here. And essentially I'm gonna take my tape, place it on the outside at the start of the coverall, and then I wanna apply a medial glide of this kneecap. Probably need to straighten out the leg, the knee just a little bit more. Yep, yep, very good. Get a little bit of a medial glide. And I'm gonna follow this tape around and anchor this down to the back. Now, if you wanna make this a little bit tighter, obviously you can pull more. Or you could take another few steps of, uh, excuse me, slips of McConnell tape and apply a few more, just get tighter, 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 so on and so forth. But after you apply this, you do your exercise as you would. Hopefully you reduce some of that pain in the short term. And the last intervention you can try is a good old store-bought orthotic. I often tell my patients to go on Amazon.com or pharmacy and try a variety of different orthotics so it feels good. You can try a company like Superfeet, which is gonna be a little bit more specific to the type of foot that you have. But generally speaking, any sort of uh, store-bought orthotic works pretty well. What always makes me laugh is you look at the article that I've been posting here with winners at all, 
that using a store-bought orthotic was as effective as all of the other interventions that I showed you today. It's very simple, very easy for certain patients. And again, I'll probably use it more in the short term for folks to get that immediate reduction in pain in favor more of the exercise. But again, the research showed that short and long term, orthotic was as good as anything else, which is kind of crazy. All right, so now you have some evidence-based treatments for patellofemoral pain. If you want the deep dive into what the literature says about what are the best treatments and how I like to order them personally and some other advancements we can talk about, I want you to click on this video. This link will be in the corner. Click on that and I'll see you in that video.